Hello and welcome to the Made to Sew YouTube channel. My name is Anika Truman and today we're going to be doing a class into the Christmas stocking. Now the Christmas stocking pattern is available on our website madetosew.com and on the resources page which we will link in the box below there is a link to download the PDF pattern. Obviously you can choose whatever fabrics that you like and you can design it bigger or smaller than the one we've got here but we really hope that you can download and enjoy the video that we're going to be doing. Have a lovely Christmas! Hopefully you will have downloaded the PDF of the patterns, stocking patterns, from our Made to Sew website, madetosew.com. As you will see there are three pattern pieces the first of which is at the stocking, so the foot of the stocking. The second is the cuff, so the bit that comes down from the top of the stocking. And the third is for their little hang tie that will hang the stocking up. Now, you're welcome to change these in any shape or form that you like. Make them bigger, make them smaller, change the size of the cuff, or anything that you want to do. So go ahead and do that first, and then meet me back here to cut them out. Now, we're going to be cutting out four of the stocking, main stocking pieces. Now you need two, one for the front and the back, and one for the front and back of the lining. So I've firstly pressed the fabric that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a taupe cotton for the main part of the stocking and also for the hang tie. And then for the cuff, I'm going to be using a burgundy polka dot. Now again, you can use whatever fabric you like, but I would recommend using something that hasn't got any stretch in it. So 100% cotton fabric or something of that nature is perfect. Now, as I mentioned, I've pressed my fabric and I have put the right sides together and pinned down the selvage. Now I've placed my pattern piece of the stocking onto this and made sure that I've matched the grain line, as you can see here, up with the selvage edge just to make sure that it's running correctly on the fabric. Now I've pinned around this as I've needed and I'm going to be cutting this out in a moment. Cutting out two layers first and then redoing the same steps to cut out another two layers for the lining. Now with the cuff, now this is to be cut on the fold of the fabric. So the fold runs along this edge here and that needs to be parallel in line with the grain line. So I folded my fabric in half and I've lined up the fold there and then I've started to cut round as you can see and I've got one edge left to do. Now join me here and we will cut out our pattern pieces and then I will talk to you about how we're going to quilt because we're going to be quilting the front of our stocking. Again you don't have to be quilting yours if you don't want to but at least I can show you the techniques of how we will do it. As you can see, I've already cut out the cuff here and now I'm continuing to cut out the second of my stockings. Now the reason we cut two layers rather than the four layers all at once is to increase accuracy and it just makes a better finished product. So I'll let you start cutting out your two layers for the front and two layers for the lining and then we will meet back here and I will show you how to mark your quilting lines on. Here is the stocking foot that I've cut out ready and as you can see on the top of my pattern piece here are all of the quilting lines ready marked. Now your pattern piece will be the same but obviously if you prefer to make your quilting lines a different distance apart that's absolutely fine. Our lines are 1.5 inches apart and 3.8 centimetres. Now, we need to mark these lines onto the right side of our fabric. If you remember, we cut two pieces of fabric together. The right sides were together. So I have removed, you can see it here, our bottom piece, which leaves the right side of one piece on the back and the wrong side facing the pattern. Now, there are a number of ways to mark these one of which is using a transfer paper. I would be using white because I'm using a very light fabric but may, you may have black or another colour and a wheel. Now you would lay this underneath your 
pattern piece and literally mark the lines through onto the right side of your fabric and you would do that all across the pattern piece here. Now if you haven't got one of these wheels and you haven't got any of these paper another way to do this is to use some tailoring chalk and a ruler. Now I have one of these little chalk on her, I believe it's called things here but any tailoring chalk would do and to make this work correctly again you need to have the right side to be marked on so I would recommend actually turning your piece of fabric around and having the right side then underneath your pattern piece because the easiest way is going to be to fold up a part of your pattern piece here and take your ruler and put it along one of the lines that are marked and then mark the rest of the line onto the fabric. Now if you start to do this for a couple of the lines, both this way and also in the alternative direction, then you will find that you start to get a bit of a pattern going on and you should be able to fill the rest of them in by actually using the distance of 1.5 inches or centimetres, whatever ruler you've got and lining that up all the way along your piece of fabric and then marking the lines in. And you should be able to do that in both directions until you have duplicated what is on the top of your pattern piece. I will let you go ahead and do that on your front, which is the most important thing to remember, of your fabric. And then we will meet back here and start quilting. So after having marked on the lines with your chalk paper or chalk honour or tailor's chalk, whatever you've got, we then need to put that on some wadding to start quilting. Now this is sort of a, a lightweight wadding that I sort of got from a local shop and we literally need to lay that down on your table, one layer of it, and we're going to put our marked on layer on the top. Now we're literally just going to pin these in, in place and cut it out. Now you really don't need to be really close when you cut this out, you can leave an inch or so, just because when we are sewing across the lines and quilting this there may be a little bit of movement and we will trim it up neatly afterwards. So put your piece on top of your wadding and then we will start quilting. Now I've got a piece that I've done here that I've started quilting and I've got a few lines left to finish with you and what we need to be doing is sewing from one end to the other along the chalk lines that we have drawn on. Now there's no need to go back at the end or the start of any of these lines because that will all end up in the seam allowance of the stocking. Um, what I'm using to do this though and to help is a walking foot which you may or may not have with your machine. Now it's really good to use when working with thicker fabrics and when doing something like quilting because you've got the two fabrics together and it makes an even feed for it going through and therefore creates a really professional finish as you can see here. So meet me at the machine, we will finish the last few of these lines and then we can start putting the stocking together. Using my walking foot, I'm sewing down the chalk line that we previously marked, literally following it and keeping it straight in the centre of the foot. As I mentioned, we don't need to go backwards, we literally can just sew off at the end and trim the threads. Make sure you trim the threads at each of the stitches that you make, because otherwise they'll end up getting tangled in with the rest of the design. Now that you have finished quilting the front piece of your stocking, we will sew this to the back and start creating the actual stocking. So we're going to put the front piece flat there and we're going to take our back piece here. Now we need to make sure that we put our right sides together. So this is the right side of the front and this is the right side of the back. Now we match them up and we're going to place some pins all around the edges like so. Now then we're going to stitch all the way around the edge from the top here, around the boot and all the way back to the top. 1.5 centimetres away, so that's the standard seam allowance which is 5 eighths of an inch. 
Now we can just use a standard straight stitch for this and we also need to do this for the lining and I've already done that here. So you'll see here this is my lining and I've already sewn the front and the back sides together and I've also pressed open my seam allowances which is what you will need to do. Now to recommend to pressing these open I would use a sleeve board or something that you can really get inside the boot just to make sure you have a really professional finish. Mm. Now one thing to add is that you must not press the quilting because that will ruin the effect of the quilting mm. so that's a must not. Using my walking foot again I'm going to sew all the way around the boot. Now this is 1.5 centimetres away from the edge, 5 eighths of an inch, and I'm lining that up with the mark on my machine. I'm going to be sewing a standard straight stitch. Once you have done this for both the front and back and the front and back of the lining, then meet me back here for the next step. As you can see, I have sewn the front quilted side of my stocking to the back side. Now I've also done this for the lining piece here. Now the next step is to deal with our seam allowances. So with the lining, I believe I mentioned previously that you press it open. Now you can press this open using a ham or a sleeve board or anything that allows you to get inside it. And this creates a really neat finish on the inside. I also recommend trimming down the seam allowances to about 2 eighths of an inch, which is 0.5 centimetres. Now, when we look at the front side, the quilted side, and all the way around here with the seam allowances, I wouldn't recommend pressing them open, just because you don't want to ruin the handiwork that you have done with the quilting and press any of that lovely paddedness out. Therefore, firstly, I recommend trimming both of them down to two eighths of an inch, which is 0.5 centimetres, and then turn it to the back side. So the back side is the side that you haven't quilted. And we're gonna trim this down some more. So this is only the back seam allowance that gets trimmed on this occasion to one eighth of an inch, which is 0.25 centimetres. And I recommend trimming this all the way around the stocking. Finally, we need to do a few clippings and we clip areas such as curves to allow them to sort of have a smooth finish once we turn it to the right side. So with the clipping, I recommend really doing it on this area here because this is the strongest curve on the pattern piece. And take a pair of scissors and literally do a few snips, straight snips through both layers of the seam allowance all the way around the curve. Now you can also cut out little triangles which on a sharp curve like this makes it finish even better. So literally just cut out a few little triangles out of both of the layers of the seam allowance all the way around these curves. Now it's a good idea to do this on the lining as well and perhaps on a few of the other curved areas just so you get a really premium finish. Now we'll attach a photo of the little clippings that we've done here and then we'll meet back and start working on the cuff. So, I have now finished the seam allowances on both the lining and the main body of my stocking. The next step is to work on the cuff feature which goes around the top of the stocking. So, I've got my pattern piece here that was cut on the fold as we talked about previously. I'm just going to take the paper pattern away from it and show you what we're going to do next. So, the fold is on this edge here. If I open it up now and show you, we've basically got a curved feature on either end. Now we're going to need to sew that curve up first and obviously the fold is going to be at the bottom, so towards the bottom of the stocking. So I'll turn it around quickly and show you what it will look like once it's been sewn up. Like this, going around the stocking in a curved manner as well. So, we need to sew up both of these ends here. So we're going to put it back as it was when we cut it out, and that's with the right sides together. So we've got the right sides together there. And we're going to pin around both of these curves. 
and we're going to sew around both of these curves. So I'm going to take a couple of pins now and we're going to pin those in place and we're going to sew 1.5 centimetres which is 5 eighths away from the edge here and we need to sew in a curved manner. So we're going to start at the edge here and literally curve our stitch all the way round to this side and we're going to do that on both ends. Now I've got a sample piece that I did earlier and you can see it here. This is once I've trimmed the seam allowances, turned it back round and pressed it. So we've got a lovely curve finish on both sides. So join me at the sewing machine. We will sew these together and then we're nearly ready to attach the cuff. So I'm now going to sew along the curve of the cuff. Again, I'm using my walking foot and it's 1.5 centimetres away from the edge. We're going to start at the top and do a couple of back stitches and continue all the way down, blending it in to the bottom of the curve here. And we're going to want to finish with a couple of back stitches as well. And literally sew off. Now we're just going to trim those threads, continue with both sides, and then meet me back here to look at the next step. As you can see, I have sewn both edges to my cuff here, along the curve from the bottom to the top. Now I've trimmed this side down already, trimmed off the seam allowance to about one eighth of an inch left, which is 0.25 centimetres. And I've just got this one a little bit to finish here. And it's just a case of trimming it that distance away, all the way down the edge. Now once you've done that, we're going to want to turn it to the right side facing front and then we're going to want to press it in place and it's just a case of using your iron and your ironing board and trying to make sure that the seam allowance here is sort of central so it's not to one side nor the other and pressing it neatly in place. Okay so once you've done that the last thing to prepare is the little tie cord for our or hanging cord should I say for our stocking. Now you've got your little piece of material from the pattern and mine's in the same colour as the body of my stocking. Now what you need to do first is basically to press both sides into the centre. Okay, so I've pressed in the left and the right hand side to meet in the middle there. After you've done this you need to fold it in half again and press it in place so it's half the width. Okay, and once you've done that, we're going to top stitch down this edge here, literally top stitching very close to the edge, and that makes the hanging cord for our stocking. So I will go ahead and top stitch this, and then we've got all our pieces ready so that we can start putting everything together. So now I have got all of my components ready to put together the stocking, the cuff and the hang tie. I finished top stitching my hang tie here and that's ready to go on. I have turned my stocking, this is the front and back, so the front of my stocking, the lining will go in later. And I've just put my hand in and obviously again we don't want to press this because of the quilting but you can just put your hand in and really get into all the little nooks and crannies to make sure that it is turned out correctly and that it looks really good. And the cuff is also complete. So now it's time to attach the cuff to the stocking and also the hang tie. So the cuff is going to go at the top of the stocking here, all the way along the top edge. Now obviously our cuff has got this lovely little curved feature on both edges so it needs to start from the side seam from one of the side seams at least I've gone from the outside side seam here and we need to put a pin in all the way around the top of this and you may find that you need to ease it in place a little now the pattern should these should touch the pattern is cut so that these two should touch at the top there both sides so I'm going to put a few pins around here as we go around and we're going to be stitching this 1.5 centimeters away from the top and you may find that you need to ease it in I find the front isn't too bad because of the quilting and the wadding that you've got to do the quilting but the back may need a little bit of easing in so it's just a case of with your thumb and forefinger sort of really pushing it into place and making sure that you've used up all the fabric that's there 
So once you've pinned this perfectly into place, the next step is to attach the hang tie. Now we're going to fold this in half and you're going to place this top bit, so the, the wrong side, right at the top here. And again on this side seam there, so on the long side seam. And I would recommend putting a pin through that as well, one or two pins, because we're going to be sewing through that as we go around the top. And after this is done, we're going to tuck this seam under and then the lining will go in place. So join me at the machine as we sew this seam in place and hopefully we can get our finished with our stocking. As you can see, I'm now stitching around the top of my stocking through the cuff, the stocking itself and also through the hang tie when I get to that bit. Now there are a couple of things to point out here, the first of which is that I've removed the front off my machine so that I can get this bit in easier. So I've just taken off the front panel and most of you will be able to do this with your machines at home. The second thing is that I have actually changed the colour of my thread on the top. So I've matched the top colour of my thread with the burgundy and I've left the bobbin in from the taupe colour just so it gives a really professional finish. Now I'm sewing along 1.5 centimetres away from the top edge and you will need to ease it into place and to make sure that you get through both layers in a neat fashion as you go around this circle. So it's just a case of making sure that you're pushing things in the right place. I'll meet you back here once you're done. As you can see, I have sewn the cuff and the little hang tie here onto the top of the stocking. Hopefully you saw that clearly enough, it was 1.5 centimetres away from the top edge here, all the way around catching the hang tie in the stitch. Now the next thing we're going to do is press this seam at the top under. Now you can see I've started to do this already, hence the reason it wants to go under. And obviously, as I mentioned previously with the quilting, you didn't want to press things, but on this occasion we really need to make sure that this seam sits neatly inside the top of the stocking, so it is a necessity. So, we're going to hold this down, I'm using my ham here, but obviously an ironing board is absolutely fine, and we're going to make sure that we've got the top stitch line, the, the seam line, the little stitches that we made, they need to be about one eighth inside the top line of the stocking. I will take a little picture of this so that you can see, and it's a case of just pressing this all the way around on the inside. Now you also need to do the same on the lining and you need to press this on the wrong side of the lining obviously because the inside of it all needs to be perfect to go inside this stocking. Again this needs to be pressed down by 1.5 centimetres so it will be the same as what we have previously sewn and then we will be able to place this inside the real stocking. So I've already pre pressed mine in place here, I'm going to put my hand in and feed it into the stocking. Now this is a little bit fiddly, it's just a case of getting your fingers in all the right places and making sure that the heel and the toe get into the right place. And then pulling it up through the body of the stocking, making sure that it sits neatly inside and that the side seams are also in the correct place. Now once you've got that all correctly in place you can then start to pin it in place. And what we're looking for here is for the lining to actually come and sit literally on or just above the stitches we previously made when we attached the cuff and the hang tie. This gives it a really neat finish and we're actually going to hand stitch this in place and that will be the next lesson, doing a fell stitch. So start pressing the top of both of your lining and your main piece together and then we can start looking at this hand stitching. I'm just going to be doing a fell stitching now to attach the lining onto the cuff and the main stocking. Now I've just come out of the lining here and a fell stitch is basically I'm going to go into the stocking, I'm going to take about a sort of 0.5 centimetre distance along 
and then I'm going to come out literally just nicking the top of the lining. Then we're going to go back into the cuff there and moving along again with that pin so you can see. Again, taking a tiny little nick of the lining. So again, into the cuff, move along and a tiny little nick. The idea with this stitch is that it's pretty much invisible because I've stitched all along here and really you can't see it. And again, I'm going to go into the fabric behind, the tiny little stitch. Now you need to make sure, obviously, that you're not going through too far and coming out on the right side of the fabric. You literally just need to go in a tiny amount and take a tiny nick of both fabrics. So the cuff there and then a tiny nick as you come out of the lining here. Now just to show you the distance that I'm working on here, if I remove that pin, now, this is the fold down that we did previously. You can see the stitching line there, and that's about one eighth of an inch that we folded under. Now, the lining is pretty much going on top of that stitching line, just to cover it. So we've still got about one eighth of an inch of the burgundy cuff visible at all times. And this means that you won't be able to see the lining from the outside. Now, it's a case of sort of easing the lining in place here. And I would recommend sort of pinning it all around the edge, which is what I've done, just to make sure that you're getting everything in the right place. You will need to match up both of the side seams and then you can pin the rest of it, giving a little bit of ease and you can just take the ease in with the hand stitches that you're doing. I will leave you to hand stitch your linings into the stockings. Hopefully you have managed to finish hand stitching your lining into your stocking. I really hope you've enjoyed this class and I hope you've learned some new techniques. If you have any questions at all throughout the lesson, then why not drop me an email at info at madesew.com. Alternatively, take a look at our YouTube channel and see what other tutorials that we'll be doing. If you'd like to request anything, then please let us know. I hope you have a lovely Christmas period and that you get lots of use out of your new stocking. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.